you know, I know as we're waiting to go live here, um, my girlfriend thinks it's so weird. I love crappy, like, gas station coffee. I think the mud, muddier the coffee, the better. The muddier the coffee. Really? I lit- I went on my way home that I had to stop at the convenience store, and uh, I was like, oh, man, they got a pot of decaf that's still on. I was like, I'm going to get me a pot. And it was like it came out like sludge. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a good cup of coffee. <laughs> uh okay if you i mean i don't mind i don't mind coffee that has a bold you know bold flavor to it but uh, there's a limit well because like i i don't i'm not a starbucks person that was one of the biggest things i hated about when disney switched over the main street um bakery Bakery. over yeah it's just it's a it's a glorified starbucks well it is a starbucks period and I don't oh, it a is a full conversion over to it. Oh yeah, I mean it's. I mean it is a Starbucks. Oh, all right. Well, I didn't know that. You know, you learn I mean, something new I, every day. I mean, I like it, but you know, look here's my coffee cup from before. Ooh. You know, you you know it's crappy coffee when it comes in like that generic 1980s cup right there. I love it. The foam's all falling apart. <clears throat> all right, we're gonna get started here. I'm just gonna pull up uh, my little my little cheat sheet here. After long days, I kind of don't remember certain things. All right, Mr. Chris, are you ready? <clears throat> I am as ready as I will ever be. <laughs> take that in face right. value. I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Fantastic Memories Travel, and its Mouse Master Travel Group. The Mouse Master Travel Group focuses on Disney destination vacations, and the Mouse Master agents would love to take care of the stressful parts of your vacation planning so you can focus on the fun. You can check them out at mousemastertravel.com. MickeyMonthly.com brings you a monthly surprise box of Disney goodies direct from the Disney parks each month. MickeyMonthly.com curates the perfect custom box for your family and has options including Disney trading pins, Main Street snacks, and, of course, authentic Disney park merchandise. Packages start at only $7. Cure your Disney withdrawal today by heading over to MickeyMonthly.com. Use our special promo code RADIO35, that's R-A-D-I-O-3-5, to save 35% off of your first box. Streaming the Magic proudly brings to you guys Behind the Ears podcast. Welcome back, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Ears podcast. I'm Uncle Danny. <laughs> Alongside of me tonight, Mr. Chris. Mr. Chris, how are you? Uh, I'm doing fine, but man, did you? Uh, <laughs> you must be really drinking, drinking some really thick coffee there because you <laughs> are definitely... Uh, in a good mood today. Yeah. What happened in my hair? That's the first comment I say. Wow. No, I l- literally just took a shower. This is what I look like without a hat on. I know. Hey, I should probably it, put my hat back on. At least you took a shower, brother. I did. You know, it was that time. You know, I take a shower like every six months. So I was going to say that time, that time of the week. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, yeah, we need to get it. We need to get an intro song and either that or, or something like that. But we're, we're working on things. You know, it's, it's all, it's all good. We're, we're trying to get an intro song. Oh uh, man. But yeah, it's been a, it's been a busy day and um, you know, it's one day closer to the weekend. That's all the way I look at it. I mean, it's Wednesday. We're here. Uh, We're here around a bunch of awesome people joining us online today live. And um, sometimes I stop and say to myself, man, I don't I don't deserve this awesomeness. So I am just glad to be here, man. Oh, look at that. Tanya says she loves Mickey Monthly. Rachel's looking the Mickey Monthly now. Make sure you use our promo code radio three five to save thirty five percent off. That's Um, I still think you guys should have an intro song. Yeah, Michael, that is. (laughs) That is a technological marvel that we are having trouble breaking into just due to the fact that the software that we use doesn't always allow a lot of things. Um, so let's jump in to another episode of Behind the Ears Podcast because, look, Cindy already wants to know, what are you discussing? Because I'm assuming if people don't like our topic, they might leave. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell people what the topic is, and I'll even tell, tell them how it came about. First off, if you don't, if this is one of your first times here, please understand that our shows are unscripted. And so we don't have any scripts. You know, we're here without a net. 
but we do have an idea of what we're going to talk about at the beginning of every show. And a lot of it is inspired by daily life events in the Disney realm. So the other day, um, right before the show, it was really pretty funny. Um, Danny and I were like, you know, talking and I I was off screen. I was off camera. He couldn't see me. He's like, what are you doing? I go, I'm bidding on a watch. He's like, you're doing what? I'm like, I'm bidding on a Disney watch for, for my wife. And for those of you who don't know, I collect Disney watches of all sorts, but there are a, there is a particular brand of watch that I love the most. So it's one of those things where uh, I know I was clicking and I was like, okay, I'll go this far because I know how much the watch is worth, et cetera. And at the last minute, I'm like, crap. And Danny's like, what? I go, I lost the watch. And, but at the same time, um, I was looking for a watch for my daughter, her first Disney watch the prof- of professional looking Disney watch. And so I had her come in and say, Hey, do you like, do you like this? And she knows she's seen watches like this before. And I got it on eBay, brand new with tags, never been worn about half of what the sticker on it was for. And so I, I, after I was all done with that, Danny and I kind of, you know, started talking He goes, you know what? We should find out where people get their Disney collectibles because we know that there's a lot of people that love to get Disney stuff at the parks. Um, And some people collect certain things and, but there is such a broad spectrum of places where you can get Disney merch, both new, old and vintage, you know, even older than old. And we're just going to talk a little bit about that tonight. And I'm going to share just a few, I'll say tips. And if you guys have any thoughts, ideas, we'd love to hear them, uh, or see them, I should say. And we'll go ahead and, you know, pop it, pop some of your comments on the screen. <clears throat> so first off, Danny, what do you, what kind of things do you actually collect? Let's start there. You know, the only thing as a kid growing up that I used to collect Disney related was uh, the press pennies. Uh, from oh, inside yeah. the park. Um, oh, yeah. But as I got older and I started, you know, obviously doing a lot more with the podcast and blogs and along that nature, um, I also began to go into the field of eBay. And to give you guys a heads up of certain things that I like to do is I just bought the other day for, let me tell you, a whopping dollar ninety nine. people. Ching, 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 ching. Got a was killer it, deal. Was it more for shipping than it was for the item? Six bucks to ship it to me. And it's coming from New Jersey. It's going New Jersey to New Jersey. It's costing me six dollars in shipping. Crazy. <laughs> but it was the a vintage Disney World blue glass collectible dish, seven inches. It was back it was made in the 70s. Ooh. And it has a picture of all the different like rides and parks. And it's basically a little candy dish that you would get for like an old person would have mm-hmm. like in their house, you would see. Um elderly, I should say. Um what am I gonna do with it? I'm gonna give it away on the show. Cool. Um, you know, there's other things that I like to bid on, though. Uh, you know, just just scrolling through some of the things that um, I am now bidding on currently. Um, there's actually this really awesome pin, and I'm starting to get into pins now. And you have to be very, very careful with pins in oh, this day yeah. and age yeah. because there's a lot of fakes out there. But I found a Disneyland Chip and Dale loves the dessert. And they're on like a banana boat eating ice cream. Super cool pin. I mean, I don't, that, think, I don't think I've seen that one before. That pins up to I'm like I'm bidding at like twenty dollars right now for a pin. I want it bad, so I'm I'm going I'm going all Dude, in. Don't it. don't go into that complex where that's uh, the problem. You just start bidding. You know, you start bidding against yourself, and you don't realize it. Oh God, yeah. I mean, uh, actually, bad. and before I you know, send it back to you, the last thing I'm bidding on right now is my niece's fourth birthday is coming up in July. And I'm bidding on a vintage 1972 Walt Disney World with Mickey Mouse Children's pop-up book made by Hallmark. Ooh. Everything still works except one of the pages. Goofy is missing a foot. Not terrible for a 1972. Gorsh. That's not good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that, I mean, that definitely is some things I wouldn't even thought about, you know, looking at. Um, some things, I mean, I mentioned watches, right? Here's the cool part. I actually have learned the art of at least doing basic watch repair. 
Um, I have in my collection probably about 40 Disney watches. Mm. Um, and the problem of it is, is that, you know, the interesting part about Disney watches is that, you know, you go through a lot of batteries. And I found that I can actually get batteries uh, from um, from Amazon in bulk for, you know, a buck a piece or less. So I actually bought myself a little uh, a watch press, you know, something that presses the cover back on safely so it doesn't crack the crystal. Uh, a watch knife. I have a little micro tool set. Um, I got a little eyepiece so I can actually look really closely, you know, at, at the at the at the watch pieces and stuff like that. Um, little mini screwdriver set so I can replace bands. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've got about forty dollars into the kit, which is fine because it costs eight dollars at the local jewelry store to have a battery swapped out. Do the math. I have 40 watches. It doesn't take long to recover that kind of cost. So what I have done in the past on eBay <clears throat> is that I have actually purchased watches um, in bulk. Sometimes you will find batches of Disney watches and they may be of all sorts of you know, vintages. They could be, you know, really cheap. They could be really cool Mickey Mouse ones. They could have other Disney characters on them. Um, but you could sometimes buy six watches for $12 shipped. Wow. And, 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 you know, the thing is, yeah, they're worn, but it'll cost you a couple bucks for a band. It'll co cost you a couple bucks for a battery. And then you've got yourself a really cool vintage Disney watch. And one of the coolest ones I found, my daughter, several years ago, I got her the goofy watch that runs backwards. Have you ever seen that one? No. It run, literally runs in the opposite direction. So instead of like 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, <laughs> you know, the opposite oh, way. It's terrible. <laughs> it's, but it's, it's hilarious. And she, she loved it. And, um, but the problem of it is it stopped working. And, you know, after, after several years. So I thought to myself, what am I going to do? Well, I found a working goofy backwards watch on eBay for about 20 bucks. The band was shot. Yeah. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care if the band was shot. I'm, I already have a band that's in really good shape. I was just looking for, you know, the, the watch, the casing, and, you know, obviously the mechanism. Bada bing, 20 bucks. Something like that, you know? Um, so that's what I do. And that's one of the things I love. And I'll get into more, more about some other vintage items and also other cool Disney items that you can get at different places in, in just a moment. But um, what are some, I, I, what are, I, I wasn't really able to catch a lot of what some of our listeners and watchers you were. You were a chatty Kathy. Uh, no, no. Yeah. Chatty Kathy's my wife. <laughs> um. Uh, a lot of people are talking about like uh, some people were mentioning, you know, stuffed animals along the lines of, I guess, like Zoom Zooms and then just oh, yeah. like, plushes, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of pins. Um, actually, someone brought up a great one that I also collect and I didn't even realize I collect until I realized I was just hoarding them. Um, coffee mugs. Oh, gosh. <laughs> See, yes. You don't realize. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're right. I mean, I mean, I have I have the Spaceship Earth mug. Yep. I have the Tree of Life mug. Yep. Um, I have um, a Haunted Mansion mug. I um, and I have a Cinderella mug. And actually, I have two Cinderella mugs because my wife accidentally ordered two of them. She got, oh, them, on, okay. she got them on clearance. She thought it was another one, but she accidentally, I guess, hit two for the Cinderella mug. So, um, and they're good. They're the big kind of mugs where they're big, round. It's great for eating soup. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, and they're really cool. They're very heavy. They're very well made. And that's what I like about a lot of Disney stuff is that for the most part, like their coffee mugs and things like that, even their, and I actually think of their shirts and clothing, a lot yeah, of it's like really, said. yeah, it's really well made type stuff. I still have, I have a, a polo, you know, regular, you know, collared shirt from, from 2009 it still is in great shape. I wear it all the time, you know, and I, it's, it's a fabulous shirt. It's very well made. You know, I don't mind spending some money 
because it's a well-made shirt, I'll have it for a long time. See, I disagree. I do not like Disney t-shirts. If you like, most of my Disney yeah. t-shirts are not made, but not from Disney. You know, well, I I understand t-shirts. T- I will say this: t- t-shirts slightly different ball game. Now you're a bigger guy like me. Yeah. Do you find them to be? Do they just fit once you break that extra large one and you go into the double X and everything like that? <clears throat> they get like. These huge necks, like mm. I'll, 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 but maybe later in the show I'll put up. <laughs> I'll show you because I, right, I'm a bigger guy. I'll, I'll reveal something. I always wear undershirts, white t-shirts underneath. T- t- I always wear double t-shirts. For some reason, I wear like an undershirt, and then I'll wear whatever t-shirt I'm on you top. Follow, you follow the guideline of semper ubi sub ubi. Always wear underwear. <laughs> there, that's your Latin for today. There you go. But you know. And when I'm wearing them, like my mom got me the one about a year and a half ago. I went on when I went, it was going to October. My mom went and they all went to the Disney store and they got me like eight T-shirts, like Goofy playing golf, Mickey standing there, blah, all these cool little shirts that were from the Disney store. I put them on and the necklines like down here. So I had this green shirt on. Then there's my white undershirt and then like my neck. And I'm like this. Like, so they just sit in my drawer now. I have I a big problem. problem. I've never had that problem. Now, granted, I've got a pretty big neck i mean it's not i'm not i mean I, it's not, I don't it's not like i have no neck i mean I, i've got a pretty big neck though um but i never i've never had that problem and a lot of times i will wear a 3x because it's more comfortable to me i will wear a 2x because it fits fine but i do like i do like my clothes a little on the baggier side also because my torso part of my body is a little taller it also you know goes down a little bit further past my past my waist i like that um you know, most Disney t-shirts um, are fine. They actually do last quite a while. But I also like, I'm more like the collared type shirts that I can wear out and about and, and this, that, and the other. And it's just more of my style type of thing. So, but I like that. Yeah, like I know I've been getting my stepdad into, yeah, that is the Italian in me. Um, <laughs> I've been uh, getting my stepdad like beer steins from all over Disney. Oh, um, cool. Like the first one we got him, we got him like a real German stein. Okay. But then we just got like a, I guess they're called stein. I guess it might just be a normal glass at that point. But it has the Epcot, Germany Epcot logo on it. Okay. And then that little kiosk right outside Germany. And we got his name engraved on the back where they do the engraving in the glass right across the street from the entrance of oh, Germany. Oh, I know where you're I love that little I love that little kiosk. One of these days I'm actually gonna buy something from there, but I love how they do the engravings and stuff. And the mugs are just they're big. They're big, they're heavy. I mean, you feel like you can drop it and it'll just bounce. Don't try it. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. do not go in the store and say, "Hey, Mr. Chris said I could do this." No, uh, Mr. Chris didn't say. <laughs> um, you know, and then last trip I got him Tower of Terror one, which was pretty cool. Okay. Uh, I want to backtrack to a previous comment. Alexandria says, I like collecting more vintage Disney items like books, records, or home decor. Mm. Thrift shops and swap shots are great. I found old Disney news magazines from the 80s. Nice. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people saying goodwill. Uh, mm-hmm. things along that nature and things like that. Uh, yes, Trisha, they uh, sort of, sort of, yeah, we're along that line. But Mary says, I collect Disney ornaments. Uh, that is something, yeah, I think all of us have a minimum of one Disney ornament on our tree. Oh, yeah. I mean, between ornaments, that's always a big collecting item. I will also say that going to Goodwill or a resale shop or a local thrift shop that's owned independently, um, you can find a lot of really cool things. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I don't mind getting a shirt from a resale shop because it's, if it fits me well, if it's clean, if it's in, if it's really good shape, because here's the deal. I have a theory. The more expensive the clothing, the more likely I'm going to drop my Casey's corn dog nuggets on it mm-hmm. and I'm going to have mustard on it or something like that. So if I buy cheap clothes, it'll never happen. That's kind of what I say, but you can actually find a lot of cool Disney stuff, Disney mugs. Mugs are a big thing. Um, even sometimes, you know, movies, you can find movies for a couple bucks or music from soundtracks for a couple bucks. Um, but clothing definitely at, you know, thrift stores of some sort. Um, Disney movies. Mm-hmm. I also saw Disney magnets 
And I forgot. I'm sorry, whoever said it. We just really got hit with a lot of things coming in. Um, but they brought up a good point. The gentleman, I forgot who it was. I'm so sorry. But he said, um, because they always come out with a new one every year. Mm-hmm. And it's so true. There's always new ones. Uh, I think my parents would kill me if I came home with that many magnets, though. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. funny, the funny part was one time we went to our local uh, thrift store that um, benefited some of the local um, local private schools in the area. And um, they had some Disney pins. Now, they were kind of rare. They were authentic. Oh, boy. Doonies are coming out. And they look good. But here's, but here's also the funny part. They had no idea what they had. They oh were, no! They, they never did. They were selling them for two bucks a piece. Ooh. Needless to say, we walked out of there with ten pins. Here's oh, yeah. the funny part: the next time they had Disney pins, they were six bucks a piece. Because it's still they, not bad. It's still real. It was really not bad, considering you know, considering what you're getting, especially if you know what you're getting. But it's like, oh man, I probably shouldn't have bought all of them because then it's like, oh wait, we got something here. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So I kind of accidentally really screwed that up for that particular store, but you just wait till you go to half price day or something like that. Um, yeah. So it's, it's really kind of, it's really kind of cool. Um, to answer that quick question, Kate, Chris is married. I am not. And we also have another question. If you don't mind me cutting in and asking, yeah, go ahead. I'm because we've been talking a lot about pins and, um, you know, Samara had asked, you know, she would like to get into buying pins. What recommendations do we have? And this is the one time in, I'm going to tell you to spend a little more money and start your collection from Disney itself, only because you don't know what you're getting online. There's a reason those pins on eBay are for 99 cents. It's because they're coming from Hong Kong and they're fake. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, and, and there, you know, I'm oh, sorry, Danny, go ahead. I apologize. No, go ahead. I was going to say there are several guides online. And I don't have any off the top of my head, but there are several guides online that'll help, you know, guests figure out the difference between uh, a real authentic pin and a pin of what they call a scrapper, which are, you know, not authentic or, you know, they're just scrapped type of thing. Um, but because a lot of it, a lot of it has to deal with the details, the colors, the outlines, and of course, certain um, images on the back of the pin itself, but there's a lot of people that have written some really good, um, really good guides as to pin collecting and buying used pins. We're not, we ourselves are not experts in that. We just, you know, have our pins. I've got a series of pins up here by my door that you can't see right now, but, you know, start with a starter pack and with a lanyard and just enjoy um, I will say this. I don't know if there's anybody that really does a lot of trading here on, uh, within our uh, guest audience. Um, but you know, I would probably say you're going to be buying some before you actually trade any. And that's probably the best way, but the best way to get some really cool pins is that you buy the sets at Disney, especially the parks. Sometimes you can get the sets through the Disney store as well. And a lot of times they'll have two pins of each one for you to keep one for you to trade. And there are Disney cast members all along the parks. They'll be more than happy to trade those pins with you. And I've got some really cool ones because of that. My son has got some really cool ones because of that. So yeah, but if you trade for the, for the cast member pins, you're virtually guaranteed to get a good pin in return. Yeah. And you know, you're going to eventually learn what pins you want to keep, what pins you don't mind getting rid of. Um, There are some reputable people on eBay that do sell lots of pins, but I'm not like an allotment of them. Um, You know, it's just, that's why I highly recommend getting a starter pack, starting to learn, start, you know, if this is something you want to do, do a little bit of research, you know, YouTube is a fantastic source of information you know just start to figure out so you know when you're buying online or you know trisha recommends some of the other facebook groups you know that do certain things you know you'll you'll know very quickly uh how to tell a fake from a not now granted if it's a really good one you never know yeah i mean it's i mean again i don't do i don't do trading i do more collecting um i just it's just one of those uh one of those things um you know what? Another another really cool thing that I also get into, get this, Disney jackets. Oh, oh, I need to scroll back and find that comment that because someone <laughs> brought that up. Um, chocolate. <laughs> I have a jacket with a big Disney MGM Studios logo on the back, uh, complete with a lion. Oh, my gosh. That is so cool. Um, that Oh, man, I'd love to see that one of these days. Um, 
I know exactly what you mean. I actually have a 75 years of Mickey leather jacket. Um, that one I bought. Now, there's a, a couple other jackets that I've bought. I got them off of eBay for about 20 to $25. And they're basically jean jackets, you know, jean jacket, like I call them varsity jackets because it's, you know, the jean front and, you know, regular gray sleeves with patches on the arms and things like that. I find them on eBay. I find I found a few other jackets on eBay and it's just, you know, really you buy them for a third the price, but you know, again, they're a few years old. They've been worn. Um, but those are jackets I wear every day in the wintertime too. So I just thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people saying they collect maps, uh, okay. from the park. Sure. Actually, I've been trying to get one of the maps from avatar because I mean, let's be real. That, that's good. Yeah. Be, be well, you're you're cool. going to be out there in less. No, they less had special week. ceremony opening day maps with like a guide plan, and another Disney podcast host has a couple. So I've been uh, I've been bartering myself. Uh, <laughs> bartering. But is, Marissa, is your is your kidney up on Craigslist right now? <laughs> Marissa says I collect pins that represent each attraction. I pin them on park maps on a bulletin board. Oh wow, that is like really cool. I wouldn't have thought of that. I could actually picture that. That seems kind of cool. I um there I do you go. Put, Stan agrees with you. If I ever see an antenna topper, I don't I don't have I buy it. Absolutely. And and you know, I've talked about this before, but we collect our antenna toppers and we actually stack them on our antenna of our truck. And what you know, I just drill a hole all the way through and then line them up so I got like, you know, a foot of stacked antenna toppers on our truck. Just do one thing. Make sure you take them off when you take your vehicle through a car wash because they will not last. Trust me. And if you have a good car wash, they save them for you. So when you come back and say, I'm a dork, I left my antenna topper on my antenna. And so I'm, I'm not going to say who uh, did that sort of <laughs> thing. It was not me, but it was somebody that I know <laughs> that, that have done that sort of thing. So, um, Pamela brings up a good question. Pamela, mm -hmm. first of all, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, where's the best place to purchase character items other than in the park and Disney store? Mm -hmm. You get the Disney outlets, any type of Disney outlet, but if you're going to consider that the Disney store, um, Amazon's usually a very solid place. You're going to get very reputable things from Amazon. And the reason I word it that way is you're buying from a company instead of when it's on eBay, you're buying from an individual. Right. That's my only opinion. You you know, sometimes you can get really good deals on newer things on Amazon. It is very, very rare you find something older on Amazon. And I mean old. Amazon, or, Amazon or eBay? Amazon. eBay oh, okay. is where you're going to find your vintage stuff. Sure. Okay. I just wanted to be sure. Uh, That's the difference. If it's something new, I always just do a price comparison because I mean, if it's something new, it's most likely coming from a bigger retailer on eBay. But if you're looking for something old, you're going to have to go to eBay or Goodwill stores or just, you know, basically sometimes just Google it and see what pops up. You never know what website might have it, but you always run the risk, you know? You know, it's, it's interesting because um, if you're at the parks or I should say in the Orlando area, and I'm sure there's also one uh, on the West coast near Disneyland. Um, yeah. Ed, the monorail topper. <laughs> Ed, Ed actually when, when I'll just say this, my wife was really distraught when she lost her monorail topper off the truck because of the car wash incident. And um, Ed was actually on the uh, lookout for another one. And fortunately they found it at the car wash and, and it's nicely, you know, nicely safely attached to the truck right now. So, but we I really appreciated the community coming together to try to help my wife. She was really saddened by that. I mean, really, she loves the monorail. It's her favorite. I actually have a cool monorail graphic in my, in my garage. It's really kind of funny. Anyway. Um, but there are different um, outlet stores in, you know, both on both coasts that are run by Disney that actually have some good sales and those sorts of things. But there's also different types of, um, uh, what's the best way to put it? There's surplus places. And, you know, surplus has a lot of really, uh, I, won't, I don't want to plug them, but you can look on eBay and they actually have a lot of those different types of things that you can get that are genuine items that 
you know, didn't make the cut or whatever, but sometimes you can find it that way too. Um, I guess you're not going to read the comment that I have listed up there for you. Hold on a second. <laughs> Could you not read that? Is it too small of a person? No, I got it. It's a hot topic. Sells a lot of Disney items, including pop Funko figures. I don't really care for those. And stores like Macy's, Kohl's, and JCPenney, or Target, excuse me, Target, mm-hmm. have great clothing items. And yeah, Alexandra, you're absolutely correct. Um, the, they do have a lot of cool things. In fact, to tell you the truth, the JCPenney that's actually on the same, same, same quadrant of our uh, Disney store, local Disney store. I mean, they do have some really cool things. Um, I will tell you, they had, they had a six foot Olaf during Christmas, not this past year, but the year after that. Where? At JC Penny. Really? Oh my gosh. It was so huge. I mean, it was like three or $400. <laughs> and I'm sure that, I mean, wow. It was this huge. I mean, you can use this thing as a mattress. Oh. You know. That is a great point. Michelle brings up tra- yes! uh, Jansport yes, yes, just yes, came yes, out with yes, a new yes. line of Disney backpacks. I saw they them. Look dope. And, the thing is, <laughs> and, and, and Jansport actually is a pretty good brand of backpack. I mean, it's not oh, a man. cheap backpack. Um, you know, it's a lot of times you're going to find a Disney backpack. It's not going to, it's going to be made by uh, <laughs> it's cheap target with team members. Do you remember the comment last night? <laughs> uh, if anybody hasn't listened to our last night's episode, me and uh, Kayla, our avid listener who's a big Universal fan, was making fun of me because I didn't know what Universal employees were called because we have cast members at Disney and they're called team members. And I just politely pointed out that Target also has their employees are called team members. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to compose myself. <laughs> Uh, did yeah. I mention, Danny, did we mention to our friends here that we are unscripted <laughs> and we're also unedited? We're not editing this out during the podcast. Oh, God, no. So it's just, um, seriously, it's hilarious. You, Walmart um, always has a lot of stuff, though, too. Um, you know who has a great, great, and well, at least in the Jersey area, a great, Trisha, up in Monmouth County in Middletown, the Home, the home Depots have a fantastic <clears throat> selection of Disney Christmas stuff. Oh, they uh, most Home Depots do, and I really miss the fact that, that Home Depot is no longer carrying the Disney line of bear paint. Oh, they're not. No, at least not at ours. I mean, it was always great because we would go in there and um, we would get the little paint samples that are shaped like Mickey heads, and um, we used to do different things with those. It was really kind of cool, but no, they they no longer doing it, which sad sad to me. We normally do our live stream here on, just to do a little break in the show, we normally do our live stream here on Streaming the Magic every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 9.45 p.m. Eastern. See, that's the problem with I don't want to edit these shows, is when you're watching us, it makes sense why I'm just saying that. But when you're just driving in your car in your <laughs> local commute, you're going to be like, they were just talking about Jansport backpacks and Home Depot. Why is he talking about, I was answering a listener question. I apologize. <laughs> um. But yeah, I mean, Home Depot has some really good stuff like that. Um, Target does, Walmart does. I have seen JC Penny. I don't go into Macy's too much. Um, the Jansport backpacks do look cool, and um, the only thing is, I need a slightly bigger backpack because of the the equipment that I carry. So I have I have the um, same backpack I have been using for literally twelve years. Um, carries all my gear and stuff like that. Uh, it has traveled hundreds of thousands of miles with me, literally. Um, oh, yeah, Duty and Burks is something that is something that's collected in this house, not by your, yours truly, but my wonderful spousal support unit, as well as my daughter, both have duties. And um, they are, I will say that they're purchased new and they are purchased from Disney. Um, they are very expensive items. They're beautiful. I, I think they're really gorgeous, but, um, you know, my, my wife is kind of picky in which ones she gets and, and so on and so forth, but she only gets them when they kind of get discounted a little bit. Um, I haven't seen the, co- well, I take it back. I haven't seen a coach bag in person, but I have seen them. The ones that, you know, they have like Mickey ears sticking on the sides of the purse. That's actually kind of cool. I don't care what you say. That is actually kind of funny. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really, it's really pretty, uh, it's really pretty awesome what you can, what you can actually collect. But 
is is there ever a point where too much you know can you ever collect too much no no I mean, be reasonable about it though like you know let's not go overboard and become a hoarder of all disney things no, I, I I've seen people actually have whole rooms dedicated to Disney, which is actually really cool. Um, it's actually really pretty cool. But um, yeah, um, also, go ahead, Chris JCP uh, JC Penny sold Olaf for 150. The person who bought it had two a two seater car. Oh my god, <laughs> they put it <laughs> strapped it to the roof. You know what? I, I'll be honest. I thought it was I thought it was much more. Maybe I'm thinking of something else, and I apologize if the case. But 150 bucks for an Olaf as big as me. <laughs> that's a lot of value for, my, for your money, if you ask me. And I and I would have paid money to have seen that guy buy that Olaf and put <laughs> it in a two seater. I mean, I could almost I could almost picture Olaf in a in a little uh, in a little Miata or something like that. That would actually really you know that would actually be kind of cool. So um, you, you know, know Alexandria brought up a different thing when we were brought up talking about uh, Jansport. Uh, hmm. the backpack line, and she talked about Crocs. You know, hey, they were just boating shoes, and all of a sudden Disney partnered with them, and they blew up. And mm-hmm. it is kind of... I can't find... I'm really upset with Disney right now, because okay. they came out with the Crocs that right. were like the Croc sole, but it's the tan canvas shoe on the outside. Okay. Do you know what... Talk for a second. Well, I know which, which one you're referring to, but, and, and Danny's going to, for those of you who obviously are watching or listening to this on our podcast, Danny is actually away from the camera right now, because I think he's going to get one of his Crocs that he's talking about as a point of an example. But the Disney Crocs are really kind of cool. And actually, what's actually funny is that if you don't wear uh, sunscreen on your feet and you have sensitive feet, you could end up having Mickey, uh, you know, Mickey suntan spots on your feet. And I thought that was actually kind of fun. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't find it. But basically, their tan canvas shoe and the croc is the insole. And it, they're the most comfortable things in the world. I bought two pairs of them. Everybody in my family has a pair. Some of my some of my people in my family have multiple pairs like me. And Disney just discontinued them, just stopped selling them. And my mom for my birthday called Disney in March and said, hey, um, you know, I want to buy them. Can you tell me where they're located? And they said they were inside Animal Kingdom. They said they still had them left in stock. No, went to Animal Kingdom and they had no idea what I was talking about. Did they call Crocs or call Disney? Called Disney. Now, you know, I I have at times looked for something and have been accidentally, and I say accidentally purposely, accidentally left on a uh, went on a wild goose chase for something where someone would say, "Hey." It should be over here, and it wasn't. I have had managers of certain stores get on the phone with other with other locations within the parks and say, "Hey, do you have this? Yes, you do. I am sending a guest over. What's your name, Chris? Oh, okay, his name is Chris, and he'll be there within an hour. He's heading over to your park area right now, and I'd go there and, oh yeah, we've been waiting for you. It's right here." And, you know, so we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, and Chris, I did check on eBay, and nobody has them. They're just, they're rare, man. I although, love them. Although, dude, would you want to buy a pair of used shoes? No, not everything on eBay is used. Well, eh. there's a lot of things on eBay I see that are they say new with tags. Well, that's true. I mean, I, I agree with that. But if they weren't new with tags, would you still consider them? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's how much I like them. Okay. You, you know I what mean, I would do? Because it's just... Mine are still in good condition. It's just that the canvas is starting to get beat up over the years I've had them. I would just take the croc soling outside and th- out of mine and put it in that one. To me, I mean, yeah, just wash them. Throw them in the washer machine. Well, with crocs, money. you can easily do I mean, Actually, with the regular plasticky crocs, I hear that you don't put them in the washer machine. You put them in a the dishwasher. Yeah, the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's just, I, which I always think that's a little bit weird, too. I'm going to clean my shoes where I clean my you know oh, stop I, I don't know I mean you know I'm just saying so <laughs> yeah ben, what's like, who have you been buying from Chris <laughs> as I said well I'm not exactly sure exactly what that was in reference to but uh, um, it's I, I buy from all places on, on eBay I do find some cool things on Amazon oh one of the coolest things I found Unfortunately, it, it ended up dying on me, but I found the Motorola Mickey Mouse cordless phone. 
What? Yes, it is. It was so cool. And um, when it, you could switch ringers, right? And so one one time it had a ring, one one of the ringers was Mickey going, "Oh boy, oh that's, boy, that's a good Mickey." Oh, thank you. Oh, oh boy, that's crazy good. And and and, and, and the funny part about it is that that's all the ringer was was, "Oh boy, that's oh scary. boy." But then it would also have him go. It would have Mickey go, and then it would just be that over and over and over again. I was so sad when the phone just when when the phone just died, and it kind of like the the buttons on the phone kind of looked like this. This is a little mini MP3 player that I have. (laughs) Where do you find these things? Oh, dude, I found these. I where did, I where did I find these? This is a little MP3 player, and it it has a little SD card slot. Uh, you can only use like up to like maybe you know maybe an eight gig card, and it actually runs off of a single um, AAA battery. And it's very similar in operation of like um, what was it uh, like an iPod Nano? So like you know you can do. Um, you know, you can do like a mix or you can just go through the list type of thing. There's no other display on it. This little thing is so cool. I found it on clearance somewhere. I actually have two of them. There's another one around here somewhere. And the sound quality of it is actually pretty good. It has a nice little lanyard, you know? So I still just haven't gotten rid of it because what can I tell you? You can never have too many Disney electronic items. So... I don't know. I just, of course, everybody knows plush. I always like the little mini plush. There's ham. Snow globes. Oh, I love snow globes. Figment. These are just the ones that are right here by my, by my camera. Of course, Lotso. Lotso always looks mean though. You ever realize that? And by the way, Lotso is still, he still smells like strawberries. That creeped me out. What did he smell because like? I never thought that was a real thing. Oh, and you know, you, you know, I'm a big Toy Story fan, so oh yeah, I don't really collect stuffed animals. It's just not my thing, you know. No big deal. But when you told me that, I was like, no way. He is just messing with me. He wants me to go in the store and start smelling <laughs> stuffed animals. And I went. I was in Disney Springs, and I went and I picked up a lot. Holy crap! It smells like strawberry. There you go. And you know what the fuck? Okay, so. I will tell you this though, the Zoom Zoom of Lotso does not smell like strawberries. Oh no, no, it doesn't. So you got to get the little mini, and you know. But but I want you to think about this, and everybody, think about this hard. You go into the store, and you're like, "Does he smell like strawberries?" Ah, smells like strawberries. Everybody else has done it. Just think about that for a minute. So if you go get one of these guys, what you want to do is ask the cast member very nicely to go get you a fresh one from the back. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's just one of those things. I, um, as, and some people can see, I do collect some Disney art, which is behind me. Let's see if I can, I can't really move my camera. Uh, I'd like, I collected some Disney art as well as I do frame some of my own pictures that I take, which obviously is not, a, not <laughs> Disney, but it's, you well, know, I do. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, your smellers are off, <laughs> Pamela. I'm sorry, my dear, but it's strawberry. Although, I don't know, unless for some reason you just have a really odd... <laughs> just, just spreading grape. Some little kid just squeezing grapes all over. No, pile. someone... No, 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 no. Someone spilled the juice box. Oh, but you know what? There's a probably pretty good chance of that happening at one point or another. Um. Yeah. Actually, there, there's, there's probably a lot of story. Put him in a dishwasher. No, I don't want to put him in a dishwasher. <laughs> First off, I could only imagine what he would look like afterwards. Oh, he would be soaking wet. You would never get the water out of him. He would just always. You would always just have that little just dampness to him. You know, it's always kind of funny because when my son was little and my daughter, for that matter, they um, they uh, had build a bears. Yeah. And the cool part was is that when the builder bears would get dirty, we would gently unsew them, take all the stuffing out, throw them in the washing machine, get them all dry, take them back to build a bear, and they would actually restuff them and resew them up for you. Yeah, Stan says get one from the back that only the CM smelled. <laughs> <laughs> hey, watch this. 
<laughs> they're just walking out, just getting one more snip in the back. Yeah. By the way, you know, and by the way, we've been getting a lot of comments, everybody. And just to let you know, we're really sorry that we're not able to address every single comment that pops up. We just have so many, but we love everybody who comments. Just to let you know, we do read every single comment, at least after the show. We don't respond to all of them. We may not have time to do so, but just, you know, everybody, just to let you know, we do take a look at all your comments are all very important to us. Um, you know, it, I'll tell you right now. I mean, there's just so many things that I never realized that I collected that was Disney. Um, like, for example, I've got my, you know, cars here, which has the, that is, yes, it is the pizza planet truck. Oh my God, I, just, I want it just for that. I, I got the, my, my wife got this for me. <laughs> you know, and so I, I love it. And, and that's Dale. And I think that's, um, Oh yeah. Daryl car trip, which is really cool. Um, and so I, I, I collect a lot of stuff and I, and not to mention books, you know, I do collect a lot of Disney related books cause I, I love reading different things about Disney as a company. But I also have a book of all um, movie art that actually it's a book. Literally, it's two inches thick. And I found that one at a Goodwill uh, itself. I know it's like a hundred dollar book. I got it for like 20 bucks. And that's actually in my theater downstairs, um, you know, with all my other uh, movie type paraphernalia. So it's really it's actually really pretty cool. I mean, I'm looking around my office and it's Michael just amazing. Said luggage tags. I just bought oh, the yeah. the seagulls from Nemo. Mine, 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 mine. I just they have a bunch of seagulls and it's just mine, 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 mine written all the way down the, the luggage tag. I had to do it. Pretty exp- a little expensive for what it's for, but hey, it's Disney, right? Well, yeah, it stands like it might be a shorter list if you tell us what you don't collect. You're probably right. Yeah. Um, I, I will say uh, they they ought to they you know they they also have like American Tourist Store has a series of Disney luggage as well. And it would be funny if they had the mine, 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 mine seagulls on a piece of luggage. I haven't seen it yet. I've only seen like Mickey and Minnie and Goofy, but that would actually be a funny one to have. Um, but so yeah. I was thinking, you know, we'll finish up this topic with a few more minutes on it. But if anybody would like, like we know we've been ending our uh, normal shows every week. We're doing a, we're trying something different here. We used to do things called after parties and they were really fun, but there's a lot of technical issues with them. So what we're doing now is we're going to do something called a rapid fire section of our show where star just ramp, just rapidly sending out questions to us. Anything about Disney, the show, us, whatever you guys want to know, we'll answer as many as we can in an allotted amount of time. And um, yeah, so let's just get back to what we were talking about. So, yeah. but start sending the questions now. Yeah. I mean, so you're right. There's probably a lot of things that, you know, I cl- a lot of people said that before, yeah. I um I actually have them. I have I have one of my walls of my garage is lined with license plates, and every one of them tells a story. Every one of them belonged to a car that has a story behind it. And so I also have like the 2016, 2017, 2013, you know, license plates from Disney too. So I have that alongside of um that's in the Gusman garage. Um so it's really it's really cool. Start my patents now. Close to the US patent. Ah, yeah, maybe maybe I have to think about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, time goes by. So yeah, you're right, Ron. I really I look at my I have a we have a timer here on our uh, on our recording devices, and it's like really can't believe that we've uh, uh, talked for this long already. Um, We're gonna start the questions. Are you ready? So let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Favorite park and why? You first. Um, I love Epcot. I really do. Uh, it's just to me. I think there's so much diversity within Epcot. You can walk around it two or three times and still not see everything or see the same thing twice. Uh, mine used to be MGM, but due to it being a half day park, I will revert back to America's favorite theme park, and that is Magic Kingdom. And my answer is because it's Magic Kingdom. Do I really <laughs> need to elaborate any more? <laughs> Um, let's see. Next one up is what about dining plan? Ooh, short version. If it makes sense for you and your family, yes, crunch the numbers. I am personally a fan, but it has to make sense. We have done many episodes. I'll just go back and listen to one of our older episodes. Um, I'm a fan, but it has to make sense as well. It doesn't necessarily make sense for my family as it is just because of the type of cuisine that they'd like. Uh, and the fact that we don't, you know, we do a lot of different dining types 
um, throughout our trips lately. So it doesn't always really fit the need, but it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it doesn't fit us. Uh, what What is the best time to start planning a trip? I'm going to go with that seven to eight month range right outside of that because, you know, you get 180 days out. You can start booking ADRs. So I would say around the 200 day mark is when you should really be booking the trip and knowing where you're staying and have a general idea of what you want to accomplish on what days. Um, for me, I think it is within three hours of leaving your, for your trip that you just went <laughs> off of. Um, I will say that I have done that. And I actually do that often, but I actually have to agree with Danny. Um, you know, usually since you have to do your dining uh, ADRs at 180 days, really just have things booked before then. Um, I usually, seriously, my family and I, we book about a year in advance, more like, you know, anywhere between 10 and 11 months uh, at the latest. That's just us. Is a nighttime parade coming back to Magic Kingdom? Uh, there has been many rumors that it is, but there is no direct word from Disney on what it is or when it is coming. Yeah, very true statement. I mean, it's just there's all but there's all speculation, and we don't necessarily do a lot of speculation on the show. Um, but you know, let's, let's wait and see. Uh, when you're going on Splash Mountain, do, where do you put your bag? Do you take it on the ride? I mean, if I don't have, if I have the option of not bringing it on a water ride, I won't. Um, but if I'm traveling alone and I don't have a locker for the day, which I usually don't, I either put it underneath my shirt or I try to put it on my back and just sit back against it as long as my camera's not in there because the water is coming this way at you, not from behind you. Yeah, uh, same type of thing. I also take the extra step of putting any electronics in, in uh, Ziploc bags uh, in the bag, make sure the bag is nice and tightly closed. Um, my camera bag uh, zips and has like a, a water resistant type seal on it. So I'm not too worried about it as long as I kind of keep it in front of me away from the general splash zone. What is your favorite time of year to visit? Um, I like the fall. I mean, seriously, it's like like October, late late September, early October is probably my favorite. Um, I also like the beginning of the beginning of December, like anything before, like say the fifteenth. Um, end of October, early November, because you can get the best of all three worlds. You still get wine and food festival. You can possibly hit a Halloween party and possibly turn around and see some Christmas decorations in November and also the Christmas party in November. Do you collect decals? Um, I do. I've got a Mickey Mouse on the back of my car. And on my old truck, I had, if you like this truck, you should see my other car. It's a Doom Buggy from the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, I do have some decals on, I have decals mainly on our truck. Uh, my car is, I'm waiting for the weather to actually get more consistently warm so I could apply a couple decals um, on the window of uh, the Gusmobile. Favorite place to eat? Oh, I know we did this yesterday, but I almost want to change mine. Oh, uh, I will say I, I will, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give two answers. California Grill is my ultimate favorite place to go. Simple as that. Um, but you know, I will say that. Yeah. Okay. Fine. California Grill is probably one of my absolute favorites, but I do love Garden Grill as well. Uh, once again, hoop do do review mm -hmm. and yak and yeti. Or as you like to call yeah, it, yickety yak, baby. Yak. <laughs> uh, Christmas party, yay, nay. I am for it, and I think the prices are—I mean, they're high this year, but they're not as high as the Halloween parties. Uh, I recommend it. I like the Christmas party. I think if you've never tried it before, and you go and you enjoy the special components of the Christmas party, and not just try to hit rides all the time, it's going to be a great, uh, a great event for you. Get there early, stay there late, get a lot out of it. You'll love it. Favorite attraction that is no longer in the parks? Mine is Horizons. That wasn't my answer. That was what I was reading for them. Um, Snow White Scary Adventure. That was in uh, Magic Kingdom. Oh. Um, you know, I'm trying to think here about what has been, what, what's actually been taken away um, that, because I don't really have a favorite that has been taken away. 20,000 Leagues on the Sea? Never actually got a chance to ride it. When it, when it was there, never got a chance to ride it when it was here. There, I, well, I, uh, I don't know if I can say that's my favorite, but I will. I will say this because I love Body Wars and it's no longer there. Food Rocks was good; it's no longer there. Um, Such a bad ride. But, what bad? What Food Rocks? <laughs> it, it, it was okay. Fine. It was cheesy. I mean, it was, but it was, but it was fun. Um, 
I will I, I will substitute the answer with this. I've always wanted to see Timekeeper, but it unfortunately it was always closed seasonally when I was there. So that was one I missed. I'll say that. Favorite place to eat in Magic Kingdom? Um, Cosmic Rays. Liberty Inn. Liberty, okay, Liberty Tree. Yeah. yeah. Um, why don't you ever talk about Discovery Island? Uh, we have it's uh, it's coming up. Let's just we'll leave it at that. I can't. Um, we have something in the works. Can't go into more detail than that. Uh, resort hopping, yay, nay. I am for it, Chris. You know what? I'm not even going to answer. You do this one because you're the king of this. I mean, the fa- the fact of the matter is, so I'm assuming resort hopping meaning like staying at different resorts during a single trip. Uh, yeah, I do it. I do it all the time, and it's you know we've got it down to a science. Some people don't like it. We we do got it down to a science. At the same time, if you're not talking about park hopping, like staying at different parks during a single trip, and just going to the different resorts to enjoy the dining and the ambiance and so on, I do that all the time too. Love it. Favorite quick service option? Um. Okay. I, as much as I love Cosmic Rays, I'm going to say I actually, I actually one of the few people to like the ABC commissary. Oh, God. Um, I'm going to say the quick service restaurant in Morocco and get the, the big platter for like 22 bucks. It's so good. I'm going to let you know I am going to try that this next trip just because uh, you keep talking about <laughs> it and I've never done it. So I am going to do that and I'm going to I'm going to Instagram it and say, Uncle Danny, this is for you. It's so good. Favorite snack. <laughs> Dole Whip. Plain and simple. Casey's corn dog nuggets. It's not a snack. Why? Because it's because it's you can't get on a snack credit, therefore, or a snack credit in a dining plan, therefore, it's not technically a snack. Mickey Al- Brandon ice cream. Although I, I will say that I do snack on Casey's corn dog. Nuggets. Yeah, to me it's a snack. But okay, either neither here nor there. Yeah. Have you ever bought anything from Disney World? Yes. Uh right here. No, right. never. Never <laughs> bought anything from Disney. Um what haven't I bought? Let's just put it that way. Favorite character to meet. Oh, that's simple. Mickey, period. Love Buzz it. Lightyear. Duh. Yeah. Tattoo of him. Uh, <laughs> favorite extinct attraction. We already answered that. Um, let's keep going here. Favorite hidden Mickey. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I don't know if I want to give that away. Mm, it's hidden for a reason. Yeah, mine's pretty hidden. Mine's mine's pretty hidden. Uh, you know what, Rachel? I'm sorry. I'm going to have to hold on to that for a little bit. Um, dining planet worth it with my kids. If you, once again, it's all comes down to money. Uh, that's a really tough answer to come about. Uh, you're going to have to break it down to how many days you are there, which dining plan you want to do, how much real go over the menus and realistically look at the menus, see what your kids would eat. What would you eat and do the price check that way? Uh, we've already done the favorite time of year again. Um, taking the auto train fly or drive to Disney world. I've done all three. Love the auto train. What about you, Chris? Um, auto train, not an option for me. Um, I love to fly myself. I love to fly, but sometimes I have more time than money, and therefore driving down is the way to go for us, and I guarantee you it is like the Griswolds. Yeah. Um, which do you prefer, not-so-scary Halloween or Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party? I am a Mickey's not-so-scary Halloween party. I'm a Christmas guy. I, I But at the same time, I will say I, lo- I love the... Um I love the Christmas party. I love Christmas. I love the the, the quote unquote snow. Um, so yeah, are you going to D twenty three this year? Uh, Chris and myself are not. We are not attending, but we have somebody representing the Behind the Years podcast while we're down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, favorite store in Magic Kingdom? Uh, I guess any of the stores on Main Street. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I, I I will probably say the the, the confectionery. Because I will go and get the big honking Mickey um, Rice Krispie Treat, and we will eat that throughout the entire week. Uh, Caitlin, uh, send me a message on Facebook. I'm actually going to be writing an article on that soon, so I'll be able to help you and your father out with that. Um, Is there a box you can put in your bag when going on Splash Mountain? No, again, Samara, there is no box on the actual ride vehicle. Um, You know, so we're going to... We'll take one. We'll take one or two more questions. Um, duh, 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 duh. 
we don't know about where to put our bag when we go on flight of passage. There is there is a um there is like a little storage bit like behind the right not behind directly behind the right vehicle, but if you turn around, take one step, there's like it's very similar to like the um storage for mission space. So they do have something to put your belongings in the ride vehicle area. All right, I'm taking these final three questions. I'm sorry, no more after that. Will they have a nighttime Christmas party? Yes. Uh, yes, the parade they will have. Yes, that's been announced. Normal parade, just like the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween parade. Um, Tiki Room, yay or nay? Oh, yay. Simple as that. Yay. Uh, yeah, that's an easy yay. Uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Did it over at Disneyland two years ago. Loved it. It was really cool. Glad I got a chance to try it out. All right. I'm so sorry, guys, but that is going to wrap up another fantastic episode of Behind the Ears Podcast. What is today? Is today, today is the Wednesday, May 31st. Tomorrow is the first day of June, which means it is the unofficial start of summer. Uh, so we, we'll, we'll be live tomorrow. We'll be able to do If we didn't get to your question tonight, we are really, really sorry. We will try our best to get to more questions tomorrow. Um, with that being said, guys, don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms. Facebook is Behind the Years Podcast. Instagram, Behind the Years Podcast. Twitter, Behind the Years Podcast. Uh, don't forget, if you'd like to join the show, uh, any questions, comments, concerns, Head, uh, shoot us an email over at behind the podcast at gmail.com if you like our live shows we go live on streaming the magic facebook page every tuesday wednesday thursday at 9 45 p.m eastern and if you'd like to if you've missed any of our live shows you can catch our archive shows over on our youtube channel behind the ears podcast and lastly from me don't forget like always rate and review the show on itunes we would highly appreciate that and one last thing i will add to the show before i disembark for the night uh inside the streaming magic page and also the disney community page um we have a questionnaire almost i guess out there uh we are now officially we we have our core people that we're working with on our blog but we are now opening it to the general public to bring in more writers so if this is you know if you have you know the urge to write if you have a writing background or maybe you just want to be part of it send us an email behind the years podcast at gmail.com let us know who you are what you're about and you know we'll be able to move from there and we'll be sending out a more formal email at the later of the week. So with that being said, guys, I am Uncle Danny. I am signing out. And I'm Mr. Chris. Thank you once again for joining us tonight. By all means, it's been a great time talking with everybody. And uh, like Danny said, once you rate and review the show, don't forget to subscribe because that way you can get the latest episodes as they come out. You can do that on, on iTunes, Google Play, or even one of your favorite podcast apps, I like Podcast Addict myself. Well, with that said, everybody, thanks again for joining us. And we hope that until we meet again, you have a magical day. Take care. <laughs>